All right, this is a continuation meeting, uh, but we're still going to rise for the pledge, please. <coughs> Okay, um, we left off with administrative reports, but I'm going to, uh, I have something that I wanted to talk about, um, and it's, it's in the, um, uh, this is too loud. It's killing. Okay. I can move it away if you want. You, get, you have to speak a little louder, Andy. Please. I know. I'm just waiting for them to fix the microphone. Oh, okay. 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 All right. All right. Is that better, Andy? All right. Yeah, I think so. Okay. okay. Um, this is called a point of personal privilege. And what this is, is under Robert's rules, and the right of a, the council members have a right to address the council on a question of personal privilege. And it's basically something that um, affects the council members integrity, character or motives or directly uh, affect the welfare of council as a whole. So I'm just going to, this is four minutes and I apologize, but um, last meeting a good deal of time was spent misinforming the public about my actions and attacking me personally. So I'm going to explain what I think happened and everybody can make their own minds up from there. First, I want to apologize to council and the public for letting the meeting get away from me last time. The floor must be obtained before speaking, and only one person can have the floor at a time. Speaking back and forth without obtaining the floor is out of order. Second, attacking people or their abilities instead of debating the specific issue is also out of order. So I should have called a recess and, uh, and uh, to end that. Uh, the Chapter 30 Ordinance Amendment presented in draft did just not pop up without warning or discussion as claimed. It came out of our last executive session. It was brought to Council's attention that the ordinance called for the borough manager to attend all meetings, zoning, planning, etc. So the amendment was written to cure that because we don't do that anymore and we have not for 15 years. In addition, all council members but one at that meeting agreed the borough manager should be able to send a subordinate to council meeting when required. So the ordinance addressed that too. It is true, as was brought up, that the borough man when the borough manager is absent, I am the borough manager. I give the borough manager's report. I do not become the borough secretary and I do not take the notes. And I do not replace the people the borough manager leaves in charge of the office. And I still am the chair and I still vote during times like that. Ordinances and resolutions are drafted for cause and presented to council for approval to advertise. This is done all the time. It's recognized and it's in accordance with Robert's rules. And there is nothing wrong with this. Last me meeting, we approved three resolutions we had not seen until the packet and two ordinances for advertising that we had not seen until the packet came out. It is correct that in large wards, the chair does not make motions, debate them, or vote. Robert's Rules has boards having less than 12 people, like this council. The chair may debate, make motions, and vote. So there was no foul and nothing wrong here. I've made motions before, and I've always debated, and I always vote, unless I recuse myself for a reason. Like, for instance, the VFW that one time I did. It was said I was trying to sell the borough manage, uh, manager that borough manager amendment. And I apologize if it appeared that way. The ordinance came from what multiple councillors wanted. The vote was unanimous minus one, indicating its overwhelming support. My discussion was to be transparent to the people of New Freedom so they would know what was going on. Of note is that the councillors informed me that not that they were approached and asked to vote no before the meeting. While this is not illegal, it is certainly not the same as the maker of a motion stating why he or she thinks it should be approved. That is just normal business. It was stated we needed to look at the whole ordinance and copies should be passed out. We should all note that we, as counselors and all citizens, have the whole ordinance on our phones and computers and we had time to look at that. The grandstanding makes it look like I was doing something wrong or hiding something. It was implied, actually stated, that the lease provided by the borough manager was not good for the people of New Freedom. 
I have never done anything in this office that was not for the good of the people of New Freedom. And this council, everyone up here as a whole, votes every vote for the citizens of New Freedom. If anyone thinks otherwise, it's because someone is misleading you. Finally, I want to thank all the council members and public who spoke to me and offered their support after the meeting. In the future, let's debate the facts of the issues, not people. And last, but most importantly, I live with you people. This is my town too. If you see something that I'm doing up here that you don't like, ask me. Don't trust other people to tell you what's in my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next item up is the manager's report. Okay, everybody has a copy of the manager's report for the month of August 2022. Most of the items we actually covered during the last meeting. Uh, just a couple items in there. Uh, just an update on the key box ordinance, the Knox box. We have been receiving uh, almost all of the forms back from the business owners or property owners that were sent notices to comply with the ordinance. We've been meeting with those property owners on site to select the location of those Knox boxes, and then it's up to that property owner uh, or, or business owner to schedule that with the fire chief to get those locked up. And, and so we are moving in the right direction with getting everyone in compliance with that ordinance. Uh, we've spoke about most of the legislative action items that was handled at the September 12th meeting. Uh, refuse contract was updated as well. Um, so other than I believe we're going to discuss some of the sewer user group actions, uh, I believe that's pretty much everything on the report. Unless anybody has any questions. Can I talk about the sewer group now? Or you want to I figured we could do that on the sewer reports. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Oh, uh, you want to unmute this? Sorry. Do you have it there? Yeah. yeah, this is just what Yeah, so looking at the uh, 2023 budget, I uh, provided you with um, from the packet on the 12th, which is just a preliminary summary. I will tell you that since the meeting on the 12th, we received information from uh, just a couple vendors on some things, as well as obviously the police budget uh, preliminary figures as well. So the figures in here are uh, fairly solid. There are some changes that we've made in the last couple weeks, uh, but that final packet will come before the meeting on October 17th, so you'll get that the, the week before, and that'll be the entire draft budget for 2023. So just looking at a couple things, um, as we discussed, the first first real budget meeting will be October 17th. At the November meeting will be the, the second budget meeting, and at that time, uh, as long as everything aligns, we'll see tentative approval by giving authorization to advertise that budget. December 2nd, our required 10-day inspection period begins, so that's the time when anybody from the public can come in and look at that draft budget and review it. And then at the December 12th meeting is when council will move to approve, or should approve, the budget and the tax ordinance. If there's not an increase in tax millage, uh, that can be by resolution instead of by ordinance. So the next page that you have is just a kind of high level summary of the 2023 budget, starting with the expected fund balance going into the year, adding in your re revenues, uh, subtracting your expenditures, looking at where that puts us as far as surplus or deficit in that fund, and then looking at available fund balance. Your committed fund balance is 16.7% of revenue, revenues that are expected for that year, and that is in your fund balance policy. So those numbers that are in that line for committed fund balance are pretty much locked in. The only things that we remove from that are one-time payments, so if there would be grants or if there's money received from the state, such as 
the foreign fire tax insurance, we removed that out because it doesn't really apply to that uh, situation. And then the emergency repair fund is only in the water and, and sewer accounts at this time. And as you can see there, uh, we are looking at a uh, pretty significant deficit in the general fund as far as going through the year. It's not the fund balance running a deficit, but just the annual revenues and uh, expenditures over revenues. Uh, and what that comes from, just to, to summarize that, again, we'll get into this during the October meeting, but we will have remaining ARPA funds that we'll be using for stormwater project, that's approximately $100,000. So when you're looking at that, that number there in the deficit, you wanna really back off $100,000 because you're not matching revenues in the same year as expenditures. So those revenues were received in uh, 21 and 22, but you're actually expending them in 23, which shows a deficit or a use of funds. Um, there will be uh, in your 2021 20, general obligation note is a tiered repayment schedule and that ramps up in 23 so your increase in debt service is around $95,000 you will see that in the general fund the water fund and the sewer fund and we'll talk about those a little bit more um, at this time there's an estimated increase of about $70,000 for police coverage for 2023. Additionally, with the proposed changes for fire and EMS, there's about $71,000 increase for those services. So when you really add all those up and you look at where did that deficit in expenditures over revenues come from, that's over what deficit amount is shown. Does that help to explain? Mm -hmm. They may have questions on that summary. Usually that draft budget would only be, it's a working document until it's presented to council. So after the meeting where it's presented on the 17th, yes. Once once it's presented to council in public session, it becomes, they would be able to do that, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anybody, questions so far? Okay. The next couple uh, pages are just a summary of the different funds. Um, as we talked about, uh, general fund, looking at uh, trying to make up that, that deficit, I did propose an increase in general millage from 1.85 to 2 mils. That increases your, your tax revenue by about $40,000 and the average assessed property in New Freedom would pay $31 more annually. So um, basically $2.50 a month, approximately. And that's, uh, that's enough to cover? No. no. That was just an interim step. Um, and that's really up to council, and we can plug those numbers in as we get into budget discussions next month. I got a quick question. Sure. The remove street lighting electricity from general fund and put in highway, is that because it's going to be funded differently? <clears throat> no, that's just a way to reduce that deficit. Okay. Um, so you're, you're pulling approximately $50,000 out of the general fund and putting it into highway aid fund. Uh, paying street lighting electricity out of highway aid fund is an acceptable of liquid fuels. Okay, that's what I was wondering. So you can yeah. use liquid fuel to help fund it. Right. It just means you don't have those funds to do road projects. Gotcha. So, and you don't, you, you can do that in one year and you can move it back the next. 
does not have to be for a certain period of time. It's just a a suggestion that to try to reduce that that number. Thank you. I think pretty much <clears throat> everything else we discussed um, regarding the general fund. Uh, the next is just a chart. So out of every municipal tax dollar, this chart just breaks down. Um, so in this case, basically, you can look at it as 45 cents of every tax dollar goes for public safety. Uh, 13 cents goes for roads and streets. If you get the idea. Public safety is police, fire. Police, EMS. fire, and yeah. EMS. Yeah. Questions? Uh, page three, refuse fund. Obviously, we will have a better idea on that once we open the bids. Um, the projected uh, refuse fund, I added 25% on both the cost and increase in user fees. I don't, that's just a number <laughs> at this point. Uh, obviously, that can depend on the, the days of collection, the number of days, the type of but that's reflected in the summary. It is. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Andrew, are we going to get a receipt bid on twice a week collection and once a week as an alternate? We are, yes. Okay. okay. And we're also going to receive bids on multiple years uh, as well oh, as. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's a watch. Whatever we end up agreeing to will is directly billed to the consumer. By us, so, yeah. yeah. that's not a money maker for the borough. No. Right. No, but what I'm saying, there was, it's not like we're going to get more of a deficit if there if that goes up. It's just that people have to pay more or less. It's a right. pa it's a pass through. Yeah. The only way we're able to reduce that is on a recycling performance grant. So the more that residents recycle, uh, the more money we can request from DEP, and that helps to offset that cost. So. Is that actually a measured number when it they is. pick up recycling? It is. So we could do a push or something like that to, um, to encourage that. In a year, uh, this uh, recycling, can, can we ha have that just once a month? Would that cut the cost? Trash wise, you know, on Friday? We have it on Fridays now, we only have it once a month instead of every Friday. But you know, we. There's, there's a lot of, I see people put out a lot of recycling on a weekly basis. If you, have, if you go to a monthly basis, I think they're going to accumulate a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, if, they, if I put it in the trash because they don't have any place else to put it until recycling day, we're going to do it once a month. I think I would encourage people putting stuff in the trash. Well, it was just a thought that, they could, that yeah. people could perhaps, you know, store it, get another container or something to save a little bit, a bit of money. You know, at these times, this was out of, you know, mm -hmm. I'm what? just asking the question. You know, um, I, I don't know, I just threw it out there to, to, to cut the trash a little bit. Yeah. Cut I, funding on the trash. If, if the prices come back and council wishes to rebid, that, that could be something that looked at this point, but at, at this yeah. time the contract's out and the uh, the haulers are already pricing those options. So. Oh, are they okay? Yeah. All right. Andrew. Just a thought. What we do, we're going to do a newsletter, I guess, beginning of the new year. Uh, I think that's probably a good idea to put a newsletter to let uh, residents know that the more they recycle, uh, uh, the better it is for the borough as a whole that uh, mm -hmm. we may uh, receive more money from uh, recycling if they recycle more. Yes. That's good yeah, idea. that's good. I was going to ask Andrew if, if uh, you know, remember we talked about the garbage truck, the, I should say the garbage truck, but the trash pickup, the, the new way they have that they can pick up, that it takes less people, and remember that one that has the automatic? Yeah. Are we going to consider that, or? That, that is considered in the contract, yeah, as an option. Because I don't know, that would, that would, I wonder if that would make it more expensive or less, I mean. It would make it less, the challenge is, is downtown. 
and, and having those to toters placed at a point where uh, the operator of that yeah, I can see that product can gain access to it. Yeah. So that that's where it causes the problem. Are they that much larger than what a some of those big trash cans are? I mean, people have to make it accessible now to be able to get out between cars. Is it going to be that much? They do, but I can tell you there's places that the uh, the thrower, if we want to call them, has to go in amongst cars and kind of go out around and grab bags and things. So that's mm -hmm. where the problem would lie in switching everybody or switching to completely automated. So it might be the fact that we'll send, they usually send two trucks down. Uh, it might be that one's automated and one's uh, uh, a driver and a thrower. So, oh, which could save in the long run. It, it's honestly a lot safer as well. Yeah. Andrew, they also we talked about the large trash pickup, because uh, we talked about call, we call them and let them know that there's going to be something you know, to pick up, um, would we be better off taking and going back to like we used to where you had like, you didn't have a large pickup every week, you had one every so often where they could come around with one. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the haulers will tell you that it's more work for them to do a, uh, a large item collection quarterly than it is just to do it weekly um, because of the cost involved. Because normally they would do that on the weekends, and then they're paying overtime, and it, it's yeah, a lot be, more uh, to have on staff and just to. Plus, it encourages people if they have something, they can put it out and get rid of it, and it doesn't end up accumulating somewhere. Thank you. Yep. Uh, as far as water fund. Uh, basically, again, we're just trying to still realign all those accounts, and that's in all the funds to make sure that we're uh, aligning expenditures with the DCD chart of accounts and add and remove as, as we see fit throughout the year. Uh, we talked about the increase in the 2021 general obligation note um, from the water fund as well, and we'll be pulling the remaining amount of those funds for the South Third Street water that project's basically ready to go to bid. Uh, however, we didn't want to bid it at this point, so we don't have open trenches throughout the winter. So that's something we would hope to bid early 2023 so that they can start right after the snow stops. Is there any, has there been any communication with York Water? I know they I'm not able to get anybody. Response. Will be the will be the next uh, step for some like that. Then. Stop paying. Yeah. Hope they call. call. They probably call if you want to pay. Better. Better with notice. Our solicitor write a letter. No, we did talk about that. Uh, I was hoping that I could try to get an answer, and I have not been able to. Our solicitor write a letter. I think that uh, you want to put that in a motion. I make a motion to have our solicitor draft a letter to send to York Water to address the main hookup. What what's the letter what's the letter intended to say? What what would you like the letter to say? That's up to the solicitor. Well, we, we know it, what it would say that is. we want to discontinue using their service, I think, is what we discussed. I think what we want to do is discontinue purchasing water and use it as an emergency hookup. Yeah. And there's probably going to be some fee associated with that, but I'd rather pay a small fee to have a valve in place than to be forced to buy water that we don't need. Because right so now we do whatever we yeah, want. Yeah. Just, just so we get to the letter, what we uh, intend to say to uh, the York Water Company, so that they can they can provide a response. You know, and, uh, can I can I we would be pretty pretty direct about it. Can I suggest that we uh, make a motion to have the solicitor draft a letter to be approved at the October meeting? 
amendment. I'll make the motion. I second. Well, no, there's already a motion. We just need an amendment. Oh, I think my motion was to have them draft a letter, draft a sentence. Right, just to bring it back, not to send it. Right. Okay. No, we're still good then. Why don't we just have them draft a letter for the October meeting? I'll second it. That's fine. Okay. I have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. My vote is also aye. On the sewer fund, uh, again, as we mentioned, we're increasing that debt service from the 2021 general obligation note. That is an interesting situation, and I can I'll try to explain it now ahead of the October meeting. But if you recall, that 2021 general obligation note refinanced a portion of the 2012 general obligation note. The approximate amount was about $460,000 that was refinanced out of the sewer fund. There was an additional $3 million that was borrowed for the sewer fund in anticipation of the needed improvements at the treatment plant. However, that is basically a line of credit. So we are not paying interest on that $3 million because we did not pull that $3 million yet. However, the debt service schedule is, uh, was prepared in anticipation of pulling about a million of the $3 million at time of closing or within the last year. We didn't need to do that yet because we're still in the planning phases. So the debt service payments have increased to reflect that. So in two years, we will have all of that paid off if you stick to that schedule which the only way to not stick to that schedule is to go back to the bank and have them redo all the amortization schedules. Mm -hmm. And I really don't think that that's necessary because we're going to need to pull those funds uh, going into next year. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they were not to pull anything, rather than a uh, five-year repayment, you would have it paid off in two but we're going to need to pull things and it'll still go to the principal, so you're still reducing the amount of interest that you're paying over the life of that loan. It's just calculated differently. Yeah. It's not a bad thing, it just drastically increases your debt service next but, year. But it acts as a savings account that we'll use later. Yeah, because yeah. you're not going to be paying the interest on that money. Right. Yeah. So because of that, uh, we're looking at a small increase in sewer fees. Um, at this point, um, it would be about, um, again, these are preliminary, about a dollar per quarter on the base amount and about $2 per 1,000 gallons on the overage. So the average user would pay about 10 to $12 more per quarter. Sewer. Again, I think maybe uh, this is a good idea for the newsletter to let people know that uh, a certain thing that the uh, uh, with regard to the wastewater treatment plant that we have to do, uh, i.e., the upgrade and tribute. I think it's okay right now with the capacity, the capacity, we're going to have to meet these new equipment, which means. Uh, Improvements is true. But nobody knows that, you know, in case we get the sewer, go, oh, well, these are going to make them the support or, you know, well, you know that is not, there's reason for it. You know, when they're just getting out of the cash, or so, you know, we don't have a choice. Somebody's already made that choice for us. Correct. Sounds like we have a lot for the newsletter in January. <laughs> Which is good. Yeah. <laughs> well, better news for probably than better. Uh, moving through, uh, 
capital reserve fund, again, to continue to, to fund that from the general water and sewer funds. And we're looking at the purchase of a, a backhoe. That is the oldest piece of equipment. I believe that's a 1987 backhoe. And, and we kind of went through that when we looked at the capital reserve fund, that it's definitely uh, time to replace that. As far as the recreation and community center funds, uh, we're just looking at adjusting those figures based on actual uh, participation in 2022. The recreation fund, that really depends on the status of the near municipal agreement. Um, so we'll be looking at two separate recreation fund budgets. Um, and just to keep that in mind that if we're able to move through with everything and join the two uh, recreation uh, bodies, from Shrewsbury Township and New Freedom Borough, that that budget will be tweaked uh, a little bit. Okay. Highway 8 fund, uh, basically we'd be looking about a, about $100,000 worth of street projects and then bringing in that approximately $50,000 from the general fund uh, for street lighting and electricity expense. Questions on those summaries? Is that because of additional street lights or because of that's just that's just a measure to reduce the deficit in the general fund? We actually got last week we received bills from Meta for those updates. So that's another step to getting it done, so okay. that means it's made it through the engineering department, made it to the billing department, we received the bills, we paid the bills, so now they can schedule the work, okay. which is good. Uh, I think I think October will be a year since we brought that up, so. I was gonna say, I feel like we're coming up on a year. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. Which that will hand? reduce that expenditure. Yeah, because it would be a, the cost, the initial cost to replace them would be paid off in two years. Like, yeah, it was like two and a half. Yeah. Okay. We've got pan before they do the work. Yeah, because they have to order all the fixtures. Again, if you're only paying for the fixtures that didn't meet their the standard, yeah. Yeah. The majority of them were replaced for free. Uh, the, the last bit of information, and you'll see this again in your uh, draft budget packet. But this is a tax rate comparison of the boroughs in York County. So you got 36 boroughs in York County, and what I did is uh, broke them down by population estimate, median household income, and then their, their tax structure over the last uh, six years and the five-year percent change. So obviously New Freedom, New Freedom is highlighted there in red. The ones in the 2022 column that are highlighted in red include a tax millage or, or fire tax millage. So on top of the general tax millage, that borough also has a fire tax. So that's why you see New Freedoms at 2.13 uh, instead of the 1.85 that is assessed for general purpose. I mean, I think it's interesting to make a comparison between us and other communities. Freedom and West York are about the same size and they're considerably higher than we are. We we give a lot for what we charge. I mean for for the what the people contribute, the public works and the and rec and everything that we're giving to the people is, is significant compared. This could be something that's in the newsletter too. Like the <laughs> <laughs> Questions? The only other thing that you have in your packet is just a, uh, we received this re from CoStars regarding the road salt contract. In 2022, the price per ton that we were able to lock in was $67.99. You can see the increase for 22 to 23 season is $79.55. Um, still a savings by going with co-stars, but obviously, uh, as we're seeing across the board, there's there's increases everywhere. Just a little 
Thank you. Um, President's report, um, I don't really have a whole lot. I did want to make a motion that we add the RK and K um, wastewater treatment plant update to our agenda. It's not going to be um, significant, but it's going to, it needs to be at least discussed and um, brought up at this time. I would need a second. I'll make a second. Okay. Any discussion? We can do that. Yeah. yeah. It has to be republished, but it's it's not an emergency item, but it's 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 a uh, time sensitive item because we have to. Uh, what do we have? Two weeks or something now from today to make a decision. Yeah, we have to make a decision on the uh, upgrade to the sewage treatment plant, and it has to be done before the next meeting. And that's what we discussed at the uh, last right, meeting. Right, exactly. that's right, exactly. Okay. Right. We were just handed all this and haven't had the time to digest it or read it or anything. Well, it'll be presented, so you'll and then you'll be able to ask questions, and we're not going to necessarily vote on approving it tonight. I just wanted it introduced so people would have a chance to look at it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. My vote is aye. Okay, and we'll bring that up with that under the wastewater. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Um, I think everybody has copies of the Police Commission report for the last month. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions. We uh, targeted time. Um, we, were, uh, we were under for last month, uh, but we happen to be over for the year. Um, do you want me to get into IGA? That's not on here, but... Uh, I'm going to let that be your call. Um, I think at some point we have to discuss it, and it's coming up pretty quickly. So Andy and I have been back and forth with the finance committee. I feel that we're having a problem with definitions, um, obligated activity, incidents. Um, everybody wants to use a different terminology. And I think what we need to do is IGA, you know, has to come up with a definition that coincides with the understanding of the police chief and the police officers, which the terminology is, is not the same. Uh, right now, um, Finance Committee has met. Um, they're approving a budget, and it looks like um, we will be going towards about an 8% increase, which is going to be about $80,000 for us. For the, well, it was 70, I think it's 7%. Now we're a little over. Okay, now it's $70,000. $70, we're still not sure where Glen Rock is on uh, when it comes to being a member or purchasing hours and the <coughs> department or the commission is still trying to figure out how we can do that. We want to keep Glen Rock on. We would like to see them come, stay on as a uh, member municipality. But I think we're fast approaching their top line budget. Um, I think they were this coming year, 2023, listed at $340,000. Um, that, that's going to be it's going to be a tough sell. So we'll have to see what that that committee comes back with. There is a committee that is meeting with Glen Rock try to work this out. 
Um, we'll see. I don't, you and I discussed that. Do you have anything to add to the IGA and our I, I differences? Kind of, I guess I just have a question. Um, if I go back and I look at last year, the year before, whenever the last recommendation was from the chief, did he, if you add up all of our monthly incidents, is that what he based the PPUs on in years past? I think he tweaked it somehow. I he, did, he, did tw he did tweak it as to increase in incidents. If we had an increase in incidents over a three-year period, he chose to assume that we needed additional PPUs for adequate coverage. That's a good assumption. Yeah, you know, and we kind of leave that to him to, to, to know what the state of policing in the municipalities needs to be. Um, I certainly have said several times that I would like to see uh, a little bit more community-based policing. Uh, hopefully, you know, we can we can request that, uh, especially if we have our have hours down um, several months in a row. Have him go out and have an officer, you know, approach the kids down at the park, talk to them. I know it's happened in the past. One of the officers went down to the basketball court it looked like a pig pen he said come on guys we're gonna get together let's clean this place up and in about five minutes they had all the trash picked up and put in the in the trash can so I, I that, that's a wonderful thing for them to, to be doing for our community and I okay, I so appreciate a sense that. of accomplishment it yeah. does it and does ownership. Ownership is important. If you look at the SROs over at the school, they've done a fantastic job developing relationships with the kids at the school, and I, I want them to do the same thing in our community, to be able to go to a police officer if they have a problem and, and not be afraid of police. They're their, they're their friends. They're there to help. But we need to let, let the kids know that um, if you can see the, re the report for the balance sheet for last month, I don't need to go into any of that unless somebody's got a question. Um, we, do you remember anything that came across on the, on the balance sheet that needed to be addressed? I think a nine unit uh, has been uh, the new cars paid for in full. Um, out of donations, that's all that canine program is all run by donations. So please keep that in mind. We do not um, put any money into that. Um, every now and then we'll take some out of the general fund and replace it with the police commission. Um, but um, I know uh, getting into the commission. Um, North Hopewell, as you mentioned, I think at our last meeting, we held a moment of silence for the family over in North Hopewell Township. We got um, a lot of kudos from the state police, which we usually do not receive. They thanked our police department because one of our officers was in the area, responded right away, and took the assailant down. Um, while one of our other officers could get there, I think he was there in three minutes. So we basically kept a, a bad situation from getting worse, and we received commendations from the state police for that, and I, I thank our officers for being there doing that, even though it was out of our direct jurisdiction. Um, Chief brought up the fact that there are a lot of scams going on, um, gift card scams at CVS. I didn't quite understand how they do it. They try to buy one for $50 and then say, well, no, I want $100. And then they don't give in the one that was already done for 50 and they've gotten thousands and thousands of dollars um, from in doing this, not just CVS, but a lot of different, different businesses. 
Um, we've had some grandparents scams. We had a family that fell for this. As they apparently call and say, your grandson's in trouble, and we need bail money, $18,000, and unfortunately, people fall for it. They just send them the, the money or give them a debit credit card, and uh, we had one family, I think it was in the tens of thousands of dollars that they paid. Please be aware. Um, make phone calls. Be protective uh, of, of yourself. Um, Stewartstown and New Freedom did hold a stress management seminar. They brought in um, folks from um, um, an organization, uh, the, ch the child that drowned up at um, Summit Grove. We had a lot of uh, police officers, fire department uh, officers that really uh, had some problems dealing with that and I think we had a great number that attended that. Um, we appreciated the, the fact that they could be here to take care of our our EMS providers, our fire department, and our police. Um, that, that's something that we don't want to go through again. We, uh, we are still short an officer. We have had three or four applicants, all from uh, Maryland, uh, either city or county, um, and they are, they are looking um, diligently to, to fill that position because as long as they don't, everybody ends up paying overtime and we, we really don't want to do that. And chief has to go out and cover shifts and some of the detectives just don't have the time uh, to do that. Uh, if I have any community type policing when you're at, in a stress out situation? No, absolutely not. Um, MMO, we did have a major MMO contribution that had to be made um, in the commission. I think it was about $183,000 uh, for MMO. Now, hopefully, we'll get a rebate back, but as we all know, and as I'm sure you've seen, a lot of insurance costs are going up. Uh, workers' comp's been going up. And uh, they're, they're going through the same thing, and they, they really don't know if there's going to be uh, a rebate that we can depend on for next year. Um, budget really looks good. It's, it's pretty much finalized. Uh, as soon as I get a copy, I will email that to all council members and Andrew so that you, so that you have that and you know exactly where all of that, those funds are going to. Um, that's um, our break -ins. Well, yeah, today I got a call from Chief. There were a number of car break-ins. Apparently there were several vehicles that what they were doing is they were traveling down our streets. Uh, other, I don't know if it was kids or adults, but other people were following the cars, and if they saw a car and the, it was open, they rifled through the glove box uh, and whatever they could um, change. A lot of people came out this morning to find their glove boxes open and their consoles open. Um, several things have been taken. I would ask you to please uh, South Schaefer was hit pretty hard, uh, Shrewsbury Township was hit, State Police and Southern Regional are working together on this. We do have ring doorbells, we have video, um, that's all I know at this point because it's still under investigation. If there's anybody out there that has cameras, ring doorbells, please go over that footage and if you see something early morning, um, this morning, uh, 1 to 3 o'clock in your neighborhood, save that and call the police so that they can come out and get, get video of that. I did hear one of those vehicles perhaps was a white SUV 
So if you see that, um, but I, all I can say is please lock your doors. I know we live in a small town, uh, but we have people that come in from Maryland, from Virginia, from New York, and and do these things, and then they run off to another another area. They did it with the. Um, catalytic converters. They went from Chambersburg to Shrewsbury. And um, just keep an eye on your cars. If you hear a car alarm, check it out. Even if you know it's not yours, take a look. Uh, I had a conversation with one person today, a lady that thought she heard something and she went outside to check it out. I, I don't recommend that. I recommend that if you see something, if you hear something, call the police. Don't decide to take check it out and take matters into your own hands. We don't know what type of people we're dealing with. You know, Chief said uh, at the meeting, 85%, and this shocked me, 85% of the crime in the area is drug related mm. in one way or another. And I have a pager and I see, I get notification every time there's an overdose and you can't believe after COVID and everything how, how bad it is. So we, we really need to watch out for our kids, take a look for changes in attitude, changes in their demeanor, their friends, um, and, and don't be afraid to, to check them out, you know, check their phones. So I just uh, had a seminar, you know, there you, you, you probably pay for the phone, it's yours. Check it out, check the text, Te check where they, where they are on the, on the internet, who they're talking to. I know that's a hard thing to do, but it, it's very important and it can yeah, really save, to... your, save your kids. Um, Thank you, sir. Yeah, the only, the only other thing I may have, we've been having a problem again with fireworks. I think I know where it's coming from. I can't catch them. Uh, somebody lives on Constitutions, going down to Marge Goodfellow Park, setting off the big ones. Um, but it's not any of my grandkids. It's not your grandkids. <laughs> nope, nope. It's not your grandkids. Um, I guess I guess that's that's about it. Um, the, um, the tables. I will say we had a, a conversation t today the, um, with about tasteful occasions using the borough's tables when they go out for functions. And I think Andrew, where you're going to handle that, send a note that they are not. I'm going to talk to them about it and see okay. what's correct. Because we did have a major problem with those tables not being cleaned. I, I appreciate and thank your public works guys for going up there, power washing them, um, so that we can, can rent that out, rent the tables out, and, and make a little bit of money without complaints. I know your, your new leases have said that they must use tablecloths, table coverings from now on when they rent the, the building out. That's good for people to know. Um, I understand that our risers have been replaced. Am I correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And they, um, they need to be requested by the, the organization or the individual renting it. We will install and then remove it. That way it takes they, have we received? We've received them? Yep. What was the cost on this? Um, they were for the stage, the risers. Um, I believe it was around four thousand. What are they like? Four it's, by four by eight? eight? Yeah, they're they're actually four by. They're four by four panels, uh, and everything folds up. It stacks on a cart. It has a cover. It can be put up by one person. So it really eliminated um, the storage issue number one, right. the weight issue with the old stage, um, and the risk of, of injury from anyone. Really handling those. So that how how big an area will that cover? You can put a band on them. Yes. 
Okay, because we've got a lot of events coming up, I know. So thank you for taking care of that. I appreciate that. Anybody that we talk to now that's renting the auditorium, we let them know that that's available. They just have to let us know if they need it. Okay, thank you for doing that. That's something that sh probably should have been done a long time ago. Oh, uh, that's, that, that's all I have. Thank on you, on that, making contact with a, a person with a lease, I would request that it is done in writing. That a lot of these things that are happening are, while well, I talk to them, something like that, and there's no record to my knowledge, right? For things that were done in the past? Well, I think the, the lease, the lease so actually specifically past, says now, that contact forward, is everything. So contact is supposed to be by registered letter, so. So I would like everything documented. Wonderful. If that's what it needs to come to. Well, we, you need to oversee the leases and ensure compliance, right, with the leases going forward? Correct. I don't know that that's done adequately with verbal conversations. That if there are ongoing issues or any issues that they need to be documented and put in a file. I'm confused, about what, I'm confused about what you're asking. Are you asking for the current leases? Because it sounds like they, they are being documented by saying that they don't have use of the tables. If we're signing a lease that's with somebody verbally. that... That's all just the verbally. tables are going to be put away from now on. They're going to be stored. Yeah. So well, everything. Just like the, for the emails that went around today, for the one camp sent with the picture and the usage of that room, that's not supposed to be usage. And in the past have said that, well, you know, when things are reported, I'll go, we'll go talk to them. I stopped by. I went down and I looked. Well, I mean, the, there's no, there's no, you need a physical record of all of this. And I'm just asking that there be written communications, not just verbally going forward for all these holders. You're saying that, you know, if somebody wants tables, it's documented that they got tables. No. If, if, they want if, risers, the senior, if the senior center is leaving the door wide open from Friday night to Sunday, not just had called, say, oh, you know, don't leave the door open. And you get how you did that time, you know, write a letter. We've been notified that the door was left open. Please make sure that, you know, the building's secure, like, whatever, whatever it is, what, whatever, when, when, you know. Okay. I understand. I know there have been several. Not, I'm not trying to make light of, of that, but I mean, at, what do you do with all the letters? Like, let's say, let's say the senior center leaves the door open three times. What's the next step? You're going to take three away times the key? in a month? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right. I don't know. But I, what, 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 what has happened? We don't know because everything's broken. Well, I mean, it's you know, the, everything has basically been kept on a cordial basis. I mean, we would tell the senior center, you've left the door open, and hopefully they would get better in it. We would monitor it for a while, but there's not, you know, there's not anything that's going to, you're not going to take away their key because they left the door open. I didn't now. say about to be a key, and why isn't a letter cordial? You're, you're saying if we have a phone conversation, follow that up with an email as per our conversation, blah, blah, blah. And then we have a record, correct? Okay. Just like just like today, email. according to the lease, they shouldn't be using the auditorium area. They should receive a letter, it's been notified that you're not supposed to be using the auditorium area, it's not in your lease. Please do not use it any however you want to say it. But there now there's documentation that they've been it, it's happened. So if it continues to happen, it could be addressed. Whatever the issue is, whoever has a lease. What email is this? Was something came around today? You said. No, I, I just I sent it out. I sent it out because the pickleball players this morning walked into a real mess. Apparently, Tasteful Occasions had an event, I'm assuming Sunday, came back probably late, and they just threw everything in the gym. Okay. I mean, there were dirty dishes. Excuse me, sir, but first of all, they didn't come back late. 
They didn't throw everything. I said all kind of, Okay, but well, but again, I, you see, I think I think what we have to do is when something happens. Well, for instance, let's say you were in a park in the center of Constitution, and the police came by and they said, "Oh, you know, you're parked here. I'm going to give you a ticket." But maybe you had a heart attack. Maybe you need to find out why you're parked in the center of Constitution. So what happened was they had an event. The person refused to pick up on Sunday. They stacked everything as neatly as they could up against the wall tight, and they knew it would be gone Monday morning, which I guess it was gone Monday morning. I don't know what time. I didn't ask. What well, was it in the morning? I know. They, they were left. The problem is, is they had the they morning. had a new person who was picking the stuff up, and he didn't come through on his end of the deal. So they got stuck holding holding all that stuff. So it, was, it wasn't a thing that they were going there. And again, Kim, you know, I talked to Kim because I wanted to find out what was going on. And she said, in 11 years, they haven't really had it where they've had all the stuff out. You know, this was just, they switched vendors who were picking stuff up, and that's what happened. So I said, okay, and she said she wasn't going to let it happen again. Yeah, you know, that's, they're going that's to fine, and that's what I wanted to answer so that's your you know, attention. But I, I don't have a problem documenting, I and mean, we can send emails to the senior center or tasteful occasions or whatever, and it can be documented. I just don't know, what are you going to do when you have all, you know, let's say you have 42 pounds of documentation. Well, you're not going to take away anyone's key. You're not going to kick them out. You're going to tell the senior center they can't be there anymore because somebody left the door open? I don't know what you're going to do, but it needs to be addressed. I mean, I agree. agree it needs to be addressed. And we addre and it's addressed by sending them an email and talking to them. That's how it's addressed. And we hope and that people right nor and under normal circumstances, people are cooperative. So that's, that's how the borough office addresses it. Yes, by written documentation, not right. verbal conversations. Sure, and it can be followed that's up with an email conversation. Yeah, that's a good question. So, I just want to understand, are we going to make the phone call and then follow up, or is it just going to be sending them a letter? I think you make the phone call and you follow up with an email that says, per our phone call, you left the door open on Monday at night and you know, it's very important that the door be secured because we don't want people coming in. We've had a string of robberies and whatnot, so we don't, you know, we don't, we want to make sure we protect our property. So we're going to make a phone call first. Yeah, phone call followed up by an email referencing the phone call. Unless somebody yeah. objects. No, them. I think that's a, a wonderful idea. I mean, in business, that's generally the way you, you do it. You and put into their lease file. Well, it's, we have sure. the copy. documentation. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Engineering? It really didn't have uh, work on much uh, during the month of August, so there wasn't a report uh, that was provided for the Do you have an update on the slider team at all? We're working with that with Aero Consulting. Um, they're working on a uh, basically a summary to say that hydraulically whether we need to keep that tank uh, in operation or we need to replace it, or if we can just completely remove and use the tank. So they're working on that information. Trying to save some money. Trying to yeah. help. That'll actually come down to DET, though, right? Uh, if we can provide all the documentation and all the modeling works out, we'll provide that to DEP for their review and then see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Wastewater treatment plant. Sorry to mean to skip over the water. Any questions on the water report? So the solicitor is going to draft the thing. That's what came out of that, that motion. I'm sorry? So the solicitor is going to draft something yes. for the next meeting. Yes. I think, I think, yeah, we know what it is. Okay. So we made a motion and we put RK and K on the, um, on the agenda. Um, 
I'm going to summarize what I think are really important points that came out of the wastewater treatment plant upgrade. I have a review with you, so you may not like it. Anyway, a um, couple of things. Um, the reason that our, our I'm say that. I'm not sure I want to say that. Anyway, the reason that our treatment plant is operating at the current capacity it's at is because of the Chesapeake Bay water um, um, requirements. So what we've decided to do is um, come up with a final number for both uh, Shrewsbury Borough and New Freedom Borough for EDUs. And what we've basically made this statement, and it is a public statement, and I'm sure the Ray Borough is also going to make it in their meeting, but basically we have enough EDUs for all of the building in New Freedom Borough, and we have enough EDUs for all of the building in Shrewsbury Borough, but we are not going outside of our own respective boroughs. That fair statement. So in other words, if Shrewsbury Township needs 10 EDUs to put in a development, they may not get them. They probably aren't going to get them until we go through some upgrades to the plant and bring the capacity back up. And this could have been done eight years ago, but it, but it wasn't. And it wasn't because at the time there were a lot of, uh, you know, the housing market was going down, how, you know, people were getting laid off, and so we basically put a patch on it and said, we don't need it right now, so we don't need to upgrade it right now. We still don't technically need a ton of EDUs, but we do need to bring the air up in the, in the plant, and that's what this RKMK proposal is for. It's a first step. Uh, to bring us our capacity up so that we have a safety margin in the plant for our own EDUs and we are it's going to be sized so that if we get an upgrade request from Hopewell Township and Shrewsbury Township that we'll be able to not have to replace those blowers we can just use the blowers that are in there and upgrade the rest of the plant to uh, Come up to a capacity that we might be able to satisfy the needs of Shrewsbury Township and Hopewell Township. However, that upgrade would be paid for by the townships. That wouldn't be paid for by Shrewsbury. Right, comes after. after comes after this. One, yeah. And this Where is, are we with capacity at the at the plant now? I think we were at what sixty some percent. Is that? I mean, I know you have to take into consideration we get a heavy storm, right. they're over 100% capacity, but during normal flushings. <laughs> where yeah, the, the plant is currently rated hydraulically for 2.25. Okay. Uh, on average, we're receiving uh, 1.3, 1.4 uh, million. Um, I just want to look here. What? But that doesn't mean we have 40% capacity left that we can utilize. Correct. Yeah, the average in August was 1.1 million. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have 1.1 million gallons available. Uh, some of that's allocated, especially when we use the 350 gallons per day for EDU. Yeah, I think that's been important to relay because some people just assume that because we look at it that way that and I think I, I commend the committee because Erica and I took a lot of heat and the brunt of that it went on the IGC and and getting everybody together on the same plane and I, I thank you for getting that done Shrewsbury is very thankful they always say they are uh, very pleased with those meetings and how they're going. So Shrewsbury Borough approved the initial upgrade. Actually, they haven't, get one. They haven't quite approved it. But in, in, in fact, they've, they've approved it. It has to go through their formal approval, I guess. So um, what we need to do is 
also approve it. It's already budgeted. It's already in our um, our uh, loan pulled out against. Yeah, it, uh, in the 2022 budget, we did include uh, expenses relating to phase one improvements, uh, and with with everyone's approval, we can start that still in 22, but not to the full extent of the cost that was budgeted. So a lot of this will carry into 2023 budget, and that has been included in the summary that, that you received in the meeting packet. Uh, but basically, this is, to, the proposal you have in front of you is just for phase one improvements. That cost needs to be paid by the current members, so that being your Greenham Borough, uh, Shrewsbury Borough, and Railroad Borough. Um, Railroad Borough has also agreed. And this is basically to increase plant uh, treatment efficiency. If we come to an agreement of some kind with North Hopewell and Shrewsbury Township, is any of this something that we can pass on to them? I think at the time that we start discussing those two townships becoming a part of the treatment plant. I believe that the group understands and those two townships understand that there needs to be buy-in. So very good. Very good. Right. Yeah. When they bought into the police department. The police department. The police department. Right. And you have to look at it, the depreciated value of what those improvements have been over the last, um, you know, they, that all has to be a calculated amount that they would pay to buy into the plant that would go back to Yes, that makes makes sense. Good. We're we're not there with um, Hopewell and Shrewsbury Township yet. They're they're going off and they're putting engineering um, data together to map out the EDUs that they want in their individual municipalities and come back to us with a map showing. And right now they have a ballpark kind of an idea of what they want, but it's not necessarily accurate. So we're waiting to get that back, and we'll have that back sometime, I think, mid-October. Yeah. So we're progressing. Construction for phase one is estimated at 2.2 million. And that would be split approximately. The way the agreement is worded right now, uh, Shrewsbury would be paying 61.72%. Uh, the agreement would be paying 35.55%, railroad being 2.73%. This is based off the usage. This is based off the current agreement for capital projects. It's actually contractual. Um, the uh, Shrewsbury Borough has kind of initiated discussion that they may want that to be closer to 50-50 um, based on the based on usage. But the actual capital improvements are not based on usage. They're based on what people bought in for initially. Okay. And Shrewsbury Borough, and without without any bias at all that I can, I, I'll try not to put any bias on it at all, but what they're actually saying is we don't really have the capacity to give them what they bought, which is true, because <laughs> it's Chesapeake Bay, um, but, but that only came about after the agreement. Exactly. So one could one could say that they should be just paying what the contract says, and someday we may get back to where the capacity was. Right now, to open up a wastewater treatment plant, you have to have zero discharge, like no nitrogen. 
I mean, you can buy credits, but you know, still, to have a new plant, you, you basically have to have no nitrogen, no ammonia, you know, you have to be, basically have to be putting out drinking water. Yeah, the, fed, the, the federal government has already calculated how much space and how, and how much uh, uh, beauty, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, et cetera, the basin tolerate. Is that number been fixed? Uh, and, and it backs up to the, all the treatment plants that contribute, and, and they all get assigned amount, the max amount they can contribute to those, those uh, pollutants. And that's it. And if you have a, like Andy said, if you have a new treatment plate, you want to put a new treatment plate in, you have to discharge, essentially discharge drinking water, or go buy credits from someone whose treatment plant does such a good job treating for whatever parameter, ammonia nitrogen, or phosphorus, or VOE, or suspended itself. It goes beyond, it does a better job than their, their permit allows them. And they can sell credits, and you know that's the only way you can do it. If you want to put a neutrino plant to discharge, it's a new water course as part of the Chesapeake, Chesapeake Bay watershed. I mean, it's fixed right now. That's, that's it. Store's closed. Yeah. Right. So if you want to expand anything in Southern York County, you pretty much have to come to, you know, Stewartstown, Glen Rock, or New Freedom Wastewater Treatment. You're probably not going to get a new plant put in. Yeah, but because we're already in existing, you're not going to get to zero because that technology is not capable with an existing plant. Correct. It will just be. It might be. It might be capable, but the, it'd be cost prohibitive. Okay. I mean, you'd have to have so much filtration and so much. I mean, just yeah. be cost prohibitive. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we could we could increase the uh, capacity by treatment plants 2.25 mg right now let's say uh someone wants to uh someone needs to use willing to purchase cdus and pay the expansion to, uh, excuse me 2.5 mg that's okay but now you're going to you have to squeeze out more nitrogen more phosphorus more people you need more suspended salads those those concentrations have to come back so that your total pound that you discharge of those parameters stays the same. So of course, if, you're, if your volume is going to go up and your total pounds have to stay the same, then the concentration that you're allowed to discharge has to come down, which means a uh, higher degree of treatment and, you know, what? Filtration is another one thing. Hey, you have to get a whole amount of filtration. You do that. It's been treated with that uh, improved the discharge quality uh, gets more and more expensive for now. Uh, it can be done. Uh, this really is also I can have a crab cake, so that's important. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you know, think about that when we read that, crab cake. I go for crab cake right now. Did, um, didn't John say when we, when we were at the meeting that if they went to go further closer to uh, that two point, was it 2.3? 2 2.25, 2 yeah. And um, he said they might have to get a whole bunch of new permits and that so he can actually step that up to that because it would change. Well, he, he, yeah, we're talking about going above. If we, let's say uh, Hopewell and Shrewsbury Township came back and they said we want 2,000 EDUs. Now we've got to change tank size and capacity, and now you're looking at millions and millions and millions yeah. of dollars. I mean, so, yeah. So do we need a motion tonight to tell them to continue, or do we? Uh, it, it would uh, help to align uh, with the other Well, Railroad and Shrewsbury Borough have already approved. Uh, it, uh, yeah, but if Shrewsbury was gonna, going to talk about it last week, or I can't remember what he said. Yeah, last can't. week or this week. It should be done right meeting. now. Yeah. At their authority meeting, they were going to talk about it at the borough meeting. Yeah. I mean, it's about, it's, I mean, I, I, 
this is really the, the only solution to this. Um, again, the money's already budgeted, and the... Uh, we didn't talk about this at the borough meeting. I'm sorry. We didn't talk about this at the borough meeting. That was going to be discussed at, the, uh, at their store authority meeting. Right, authority is first, and then the borough for next month. Yeah. Yes, we don't need to do anything because they still haven't even talked about it with their borough. Well, you don't have to. Um, and they actually, the agreement says that New Freedom makes the improvements and decides and the rest pay for them. We're trying to foster better relationships to make sure everybody understands where this is going, where this is headed. So that's why we took it to the group. Ultimately, New Freedom can just say this is what we're doing and the rest are going to help pay for it. Who's saying that? Either way, it, it has to be done at some point in the very near future. We have to initiate the process uh, to keep this moving in the right direction. Do we have, is there a uh, time limit on the proposal? I was looking, I don't, like, usually there are 30 days, um, which would put this past um, the next meeting. Yeah. No, September 16th. Yeah. Right, the next meeting is October 17th. So we'll be voting on anything tonight. What would you be making the motion to vote on? Well, that's what I was asking. Do we need to do? Do we need to move forward with it? I wasn't trying to lie here. I was just trying to try to figure out what we need to do. Just don't know what's in it. Vote on it. And it's good, I, I well, your infrastructure committee knows what's in it. I mean, Burnell, Dennis, and myself have been going to these meetings. Mm -hmm. We're presenting it now to you to, you know, to make a decision. So this is what we would be voting on, but we haven't yet gotten a chance to look at it. I think that's, that's what you're... Yeah. Well, we can, yeah, I'm a week away. I just don't want the... Uh, what are you going to review in here that you're going to have a different opinion on based on knowledge of the wastewater treatment plan and the needed upgrade? I have no idea because I haven't talked to the treatment agenda. I don't know. That's why. I mean, how do you know? How do you know? We just don't know. I don't know. It's the, it's the committee's recommendation that yes. the council... It's the, accept committee, this. It's, the, it's the committee's recommendation that council accept this. This is what John Smith, who walks on the water as far as I'm concerned, uh, recommends. And this, it, it's not, there isn't like an alternative. And it's, it's not, not like new. We, we've been talking about this. For right. Long. And it's in the budget. I mean, we budgeted for it. So, I mean, it's. Yeah, why we, yeah we, could, we could do that. I would entertain a motion. A motion that we accept the RK&K um, okay. plan for wastewater treatment capacity improvements. I'll second. Okay, any other discussion? Does this have to be done by resolution or anything? No, no but it's, it's just, just service. Service. Okay. Yeah. I just don't feel there's adequate time to get into review, so. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. I vote is aye. Motion carried. Did Dave? Sorry? Dave, did you vote? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear it. Aye. Okay. Thank you. This kind of also, just as a side note, um, wraps up any developer wanting you know, to tell Shrewsbury Borough we have the EDA because they don't. They have enough to build out what they have currently. Every month that happens. 
Yeah, but it won't. <laughs> so we did our calculations from the agreement as well. So we have our number, they have their number. We're both on the same page, which I think is great. But we do have EDUs. Oh, yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, we have 299. I know. But it's how many they have. That's they have 266, right? Zoning and code enforcement. I have one thing, uh, number 16, that got done. You're on the code report? Yep. Yes, it did. So that's uh, the head of the game. Yeah, now that was regarding the signs placed out at the road. Another letter was, and I'm kind of getting ahead because we're back a month here, but another letter was sent in September regarding the, the other side, the, yes. the neon. Yes. yes. Okay. Good. So I agree. I agree with Kim. Those signs, those signs on the road were really distracting. Yeah. Yeah. That was just an accident waiting to happen. What What was the time that those lights were able to be on during the day? I think they was were. It Ten or eleven. From what time to what time? Uh, they can't be on. I believe it was a 11 to 6. I'd have to look up in the zoning ordinance again, but they have to be off. But either way, they're still in violation because it's an illuminated sign in the yeah. residential district. Yeah, I thought that's what we so had I'm to do. So by 625 this morning, I provided that picture. Lit up like Christmas. In other words, they didn't turn them off before they, when they closed last night. Right. They, yeah. It's, it's, in, it's in the zoning ordinance, so I think I explained this last time as well, that zoning ordinance requires that you make some kind of effort to be in compliance within within 15 days, and you have 45 days to, 45 days to fully comply. So they, I will say, they, they complied very quickly with the initial letter that was sent regarding the signs placed out at the road, so I would anticipate that we will get compliance with the second letter as well. And when did the second letter go out? I believe the 16th. 16th of September. Yeah, and that'll be on the September report. Okay. And then uh, we'll see what we got. Now we're on this. Um, there's one issue on here. It's 43 East Franklin Street, and it's about a vehicle that's stored there. Is that that they're not that they that's not that's not, not over I think because it's still there. Correct. That's. It, it, and that I, is that the magistrate? Okay, because I had different people approach me and and there, people are complaining about that because of like, the the grass about this high and. The, right, and you actually see that on the second page as well because they were sent a letter complied. Got that again. They were sent a letter, and now we're at the magistrate. Can I ask, put one in for the lumber company coming into town? You know, all those telephone poles are cut like three feet high, and the beads are taller than that. It looks horrible all along there coming into town. Can that be addressed? By Man and Parker? Mm -hmm. Their property, yes. All in front of you know those telephone poles? I do. Mm -hmm. Well, all things. Like across from Weathersfield, yeah. Um, no, it's not like right from there, there, there to where like the homes start, the weeds are taller oh, than the oh, telephone yeah. poles that are cut. Is that their property? It's their property. It's behind the telephone. Oh, I do. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's just. Well, they're still responsible for mowing the right away. So that yes, would still, like still be there, still be there, area. And they do have new ownership, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't they just transfer again? They just sold again, right? In the last, within the last six months. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Man and Parker is. So it's not slightly coming into town. Man and yeah. Parker. It's somebody else. Mm -hmm. I they, guess they kept the name. Anything else? Yeah, 22, um, well, let's go to picture nine. I don't want to give names 
Okay, we, we've, I thank you for taking care of a lot of that, um, but we still have two junk cars there. Now that he built a nice garage, none of the cars are in it. And we still have two junk cars there. Is that not, yeah, nine, uh, nine and ten, it's that property. You know where I mean, Andrew, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're covered. So, is that the. No, wait a minute. If you have a car covered, well, I, unlicensed I, junker, car I mean, I guess, covered, is that. I guess playing the other side of it, how do we know that they're unlicensed and they're not? Well, I don't think they're both covered. <laughs> Hope they were. Could be wrong. One's a car and one's a do you have a jeep? That's no box here. Yeah. Tom, I'm not gonna get picky. At least he's don't need to worry about the roof coming. We've hit, we've hit that property pretty hard over the last couple of months, and he's complied on every uh, yeah, on everything that's been said. Yeah. yeah. Right, we'll take a look at it. He's, the problem there, if you look at picture 10, the problem there is he cut it back. He would have been better off to just dig it up or cut it off because it's going to grow back again in three months. That's one of those things that just grows. It is the weeds, basically. But I guess we'll deal with that when it... 10 and 11 when they grow back, because they've already grown back about eight inches. Okay. Thanks. It's doing a good job on that. Appreciate it. On the VFW uh, post on the land development, are the additional approvals needed of the uh, DEP? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I meant. That's the NPDES permit and right. the HOP. Yeah. I have a question. Uh huh. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, number number one, cross street for me. Tonight there are two cars. Uh, the the uh, backed into trees with the license plate is the back. Is the trees are backed? Uh, the cars are backed into these trees. During the night, sometimes they get moved around. Should I go over there, maybe take a picture or? No, don't, don't go on there. I'm sure that that's illegal, isn't it? I mean, they're, they're obviously they're in the backyard. They back back into the trees, so you don't see the uh, the license plate. Yeah, I was there a month a month ago, and they were backed into the shrubs. Do, does this only happen at night? Are they? Well, yeah, that, yeah. Sometimes there's three cars in backed up in, into into the trees, and then they move them. Right now, I think there's a white car. Yeah, it's a lot of activity during the night. Now, I, I, should I call the police department at that time when yeah. these cars arrive? When I was there, it was a red car. They're, park, they're parking them on their property. I, I don't think that the police department would be able to enforce anything. That would but see, but it, no, what I'm saying is it's on their property, but the division between their house and the next house, there's a row of bushes, big, tall bushes. And for you to drive your car onto your property in the backyard and then to back your car, your half of your car is in the bushes. Now, what is the reason for that? It, it, to me, is to hide the, uh, the license plate. Because otherwise, I mean, you know, there's parking place on the street or the side. I mean, they have a double lot that they speak with the neighbor next door. But why would you why would you run a car and then move the car? Then all of a sudden, another car appears and it's it's, it's back into the bushes. I I would say it wouldn't hurt to call the police department and report that that that's occurring. 
And then you know, like I, I'm, 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 I'm alive. Oh, it's usually awake at night. Now when I came home, I, I figured I would maybe call them, and and then they can check this out. Yeah, I, I think that's because a good. That's actually, it starts about um, one two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's a good idea, though, Inga. I think you probably should call, call, call let the place yeah, know. I don't know if I should, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, I, I just think it's suspicious. Why you would back half of your car into bushes? Yeah. I would call the police, let them handle it. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's better because I'm, yeah, I'm by myself, yeah. <laughs> well, I pepper spray, that's my <laughs> All right, I was just wondering, because it's, it's uh, sometimes there's three cars, sometimes two cars, then we have a motorcycle, then we have activity in the garage, it's all, all at night. Yes, yeah, if, if, if you'd like to follow up with the police department, and then uh, I'll speak with Wade tomorrow, and, and we'll okay. discuss Could other... You, because something definitely, we can go to one time in the summer, the beginning of the summer, a police officer, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it was a Sergeant Schmuck, stopped by and I talked to him, and he was taking photographs when the, when the cars were like in the front yard. Uh, and he said, just talk, you know, I, I, I leaned into the window and, and, and spoke to him, you know, because they were, they were home. And uh, so from, from that time on, then they, they started going in the backyard, back in the cars, into the bushes. Okay, okay. Yeah, let us know how that works out. So that's that, that's okay. I I I I'll just go ahead and call them and and see, you know. Yeah. I don't I don't I'm really yeah. not anxious to always go over there by myself, you know. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, no. please. Yeah, please don't. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Yeah, I won't do that. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. uh, recreation. Um, I think everybody's had the reports. So if anybody has any specific questions, um, I do want to say that the. Uh, the sponsorship for the, the concert is Crescent Industry for fifteen hundred dollars. Eden Tool for seven hundred fifty. RO Consultant with five hundred and Keller Brown for five hundred. So we thank them for their generous donations. Um, sorry. Is there any other specific questions? Do, do, do they anything else happen? I couldn't take the last year. Did anything else happen with the cornhole? people that wanted to I mean, kind the, of join that, up with Rack and... No, that's just that he was interested. Um, I think it's going to depend on if he wants to run it through Rack or if he wants to run it as a, I guess a separate business. It would depend on what he, how he wants to do it and they would need to get some more information on that. So as of now, they're not... Going to, I don't, as I don't, of now, they're not using the community center? I'm not, they're I'm just not aware of. setting up in the tennis courts? Yeah. And they, they, and they had the understanding with um, with Rec that if anybody who wanted to play tennis uh, came along, that they would then vacate the courts. Is it easier to do that rather than just put them in the grass? Um, he, somebody mentioned that they wanted the lights. Well, yeah, they wanted the lights to to play at night when it's a little cooler out. Um, but he also said um, something about not putting his boards down in grass or dirt. They're very expensive, he said. I don't know. I bought mine. Set. Still professionals. Any other questions? Right. Okay. Anything on uh, business development? Kind of talked about EMS and fire funding when we were talking about the draft uh, budget. Preliminary. Uh, is there any updates to that? I don't know of any idea. No, and I was out of town. I didn't make the last meeting. I know that was their budget meeting. Um, I was out of town for a wedding. Well, I think I think we just proceed with what uh, Jim Mustard gave us. There. Yeah. Now they are having they are having a Halloween bingo. Yeah, um, I saw that. They they were in touch with you. Now they're not selling tickets. We changed it. Though. Okay, you changed it. That's fine. So everybody. Halloween bingo. It's cash bingo too. Cash bingo. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, infrastructure, we already discussed um, sewer and water. You touched on roads. Is there any questions or anything on infrastructure? Is the park is the park considered infrastructure? Um, well, 
we have an item on pickleball court installation, but did you have a, something, a specific question? Well, just an observation, and it's nothing that can be acted on now, but I mean, the, the basketball court fencing is, is coming apart. Um, and there's, you know, if you look, if you look at it, somebody's trying to, trying to take it apart. Oh, oh. And it's been like that for a while. The other thing is, I mean, I spent a long time there on Saturday and at the bandstand, and somebody's been, there's there's pieces out of the stairs that are going up, with somebody taking chunks. Is that something we, we did, or? Uh, no, I know, I, we had a public works employee that took the rails, and they were going to start making those repairs. So well, that, were, that, okay, yeah. that's, okay. That's I, thought, I didn't, hadn't heard about the basketball court. But if you look at the basketball courts, you can see where they've been trying to take them apart. Yeah. You think they're just climbing on them and breaking them, or are they actually trying to? They're they're on hook. Um, okay. Does does do the cameras face over that direction? Say yes. Close, close, close. <laughs> yeah, close <laughs> once at the well house, but it's not going to be able to pick up. Because uh, we had the same issue with the uh, kids skateboarding on the tennis. You can see them, but you can't you can't make out faces. So. Again, we, we could probably see, we, well, first we would need some kind of narrow down date and time. Right. Um, and then kind of go from there. You could get a general idea of what they look like, but it's not going to be clear enough to be able to really pinpoint that person. Is it? Uh, I know we, I don't know whether it was resolution or ordinance. Is it possible we gave chief permission and allow him to be able to access. But could we have during the day or when officers are there, can they hook that into the screen that they have so that they can? They, they have that now. They can pull up the cameras. They can pull it up, but they don't have it. They have to actually pull it up. Right now, what they have, we have cameras all around this building. And there are different, I think, six different screens. One screen with six different shots. Yeah. Is, is there any way we could do that for the police that they can keep an eye on it for us? Or uh, I would, they have they have access. I would think they would need to call CIA alarm and. and be able to lay out their screen like that um, because without the they would either put another screen in or lay their screen out to have what um, does everybody 10, think about 10 or 12 that? different I mean, screens? I know it's not on the agenda, but it would think about that, would that maybe probably be a pretty low priority for a police officer. I mean, they're not going to monitor a playground during the day. Well, they're sit, if they're, they're in there, they, they monitor what they have there now and they have that specifically for uh, a transfer you know if people buy things online there's a spot out there that you're supposed to go to that they will you know keep an eye on you if you notify them that you're going to be doing an exchange so somebody yeah saying, that's a notification a specific I, I, I just wish there was some way other way we could. Why, why don't you ask chief what he thinks of it Okay, that would be a no, good that's idea. If they already have the feed going into the into yeah. their location, yeah. they should be able to put it onto the. Um, uh, sorry. Kim, are we going to get charged for PPUs if they do that? Oh, not nah. unless it becomes an incident. I don't think so. I mean, I, I, Glenrock, Glenrock is putting in a bunch of cameras. They're having the same problem in their park. Uh, Shrewsbury is doing the same thing at their park. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll check with the other mayors too and see how they handle it. I, for a while, they, they might have a feed over here for, okay. well, for check, everybody. Yeah, check with Chief. I'll I mean, check with Chief. Yeah, and it's see worth it if he, if he wants, you know, if he has, he has the manpower. Yeah, what's does. the cost of a screen and then next to nothing? Yeah, you know, nowadays, nowadays. Yeah. Andrew, have we had any? Have we recouped anything from the cameras that's damaged to the park? It's been like a year, right? Yeah. Not to date, no. And we do still have the signs up that yeah. you're yeah. under surveillance. Yeah. Have to, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, you had something on pickleball court installation, I believe. 
Yeah, we, um, Warehouse has been working on that, and, and that's kind of in conjunction now with the master site plan. They did have a uh, contractor give a rough estimate based on the drawings and all the specifications that were made for the pickleball court installation that we previously looked at. Uh, the price for that was four hundred thousand dollars. I I don't understand that because like Ross Paving was going to put in well two courts. Mm -hmm. two yeah, years. I mean this is I wouldn't have the elegant no, 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 right. This is, is this is uh, building that area up. It's putting the stormwater improvements in. You got to meet your current ordinance now. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the surfacing, the fencing, the lighting getting ADA access to it, so it's, there's a lot of grading involved, there's some stormwater mm -hmm. work that needs to be done, not even in relation to that impervious area, but um, that's a discharge area right now for the well house, so it's, it's possible, uh, but again, remember you're dealing with prevailing wage rates once you get into a uh, yeah. project of that magnitude. Why don't we fold it into the master site that's plan and down. see where we yes. come out with grant wise and that's the smart move at this point. Okay. Uh, uh, personnel, um, Brian and I got together and talked about the um, what we were going to put in for the budget for uh, wages, salary increases for next year. I mean, everybody knows we've been looking at. Eight, 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 eight and a half percent inflation. Uh, a review of the literature showed that uh, companies and other nonprofits are putting in five to eight. So we put five percent as a placeholder in the budget. And of course, we'll talk about that when yeah. we get to the budget. Yes. Um, public safety, I think we covered everything with the uh, sesquicentennial committee. Yeah, so I think I gave you that, my little the mm -hmm. information. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I, one thing I do want to say, at the Freedom Fest, it was well received because people liked their shirts with those emblems on it. I think um, I don't have any questions about your report, but um, we got some we got some feedback at the truck zoo actually. But um, we need to kind of define the dates and come up with like a tentative schedule so that we can put that out and people can see what they're interested in helping with. So maybe you could come up with um, yeah. a schedule of events, what day we're going to start. I guess the actual date is in July, right? Well, the uh, that the parade that uh, they were we're talking about is they're going to make that part of the one we have in the, you know, around the Fourth of July. You know, the, that's when that would start. But then the rest of it, I wanted to try to keep everything in the month of August. That that was what I was trying to do. I'm going to talk to Mary Ann and see. We were talking about having a, a concert in the park tied with. And find out what day we can do that. Maybe maybe that'll give me something to work around that I can. Yeah. NCR is interested. In, yes, uh, I got to help me out. Myra Gillis is interested in helping out. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe for next meeting we can have like a tentative schedule. We don't have to be etched in stone or anything, but just some kind of schedule we could start talking about. That'd be cool. Anyone have questions? So so you're. I'm sorry, Dave. Go ahead. Just suggestion. I mean, if you're gonna, if if those different people are interested, it, at some point it might be a good idea to just put a. If you're gonna have a meeting, get all just invite everybody, so everybody can share it. Yeah. You could use the council room. Yeah. I mean, you know, just set it up with Andrew. And yeah, because I think because uh, because some of the people I want to try to get together with them because sometimes they're hard to get a hold of. So I would like to get a hold of them so we can get things so I have some idea of what the, of what dates I can use because right now sometimes I get you, you think you do but 
then you don't. Yeah. Well, that is that is hard. I mean, we we tried to put together a dance for the VFW and found out there were other activities on that day. I think we had a car, VFW had a car show. There were other car shows within a week of you know either side and you know so yeah it really is hard with all the activities that are going on in all the different communities. Are you looking to possibly do this in conjunction with our regular Fourth of July parade or it's, it's a, a separate parade? Well, they were. How did Marianne say that? Well, I think she said that they're all right if they have a float at the end. Yeah, have something at the end, yeah. But I, I think that for Susquecentennial, it, it deserves a little more recognition than Yeah, that. I was I was thinking about having a separate parade, but I don't know how that would go with a parade in July and but, a parade in August. So yeah, that's you combine a, you know what you could do is, just a thought, but you know, you could combine the parade with the Fourth of July parade, right. but you could ask people to enter floats and they could pick maybe one of, call it five topics, like maybe the old timers baseball thing, and they could have a, yeah, yeah. SYC could maybe do that with all the kids and stuff, and have the old time, and then you could have another one for the cannery, what used to be, you know, what they did, that, I, I'm just saying, you know, just a thought, and you could have like maybe five at the end, and then give them a prize based on which one's the best, or let the crowd vote, or. Something like you that. Can you can make it the thing for all the, the participants thing. involved. You, you can make the sesquicentennial the yeah, theme that's, that, that's for the Fourth of July parade. Yeah, yeah, that would be ideal, yeah. oh, I yeah. think. Yeah, that's because a, it's my humble opinion. Because I, uh, I talked to the Heritage Council also. I was talking to some of the people that were involved in that, and we were talking about things they could do, what they would, might do. Because I wanted to get it. anybody that wants to do something. I, I, told, I said anybody that wants to be involved can. I said anything they that they come up with that they want to do. I mean, it's going to be appreciated because that'll just make the whole thing that much nicer. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, maybe put together a tentative schedule. Yeah, I would say the the rec commission was was not in favor of an additional one, but um, uh, item number eight on the rec minutes was. The New Freedom uh, New Year's parade uh, next year's parade will be in honor of New Freedom Susquehanna Centennial anniversary. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember how Mary Ann what she said. But. Yeah. that'd be great. That'd be a date on the calendar then. Yeah, that'd be something I can. <laughs> There's something you can I can always chisel out. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's definitely. Uh, very elaborate, but if you'd like to see what a, another borough in Pennsylvania did for uh, their sesquicentennial, if, if you go to Lansdale Borough, uh, Lansdale Borough 150th, uh, now they're a borough that's over near Philadelphia, um, but they plan basically uh, quite a few months over where they did different events throughout uh, the calendar year to kind of celebrate their anniversary, so it's, it would give you a good idea of what others yeah, are doing. Some, the some of the, sometimes you have a little, you know, you look at different, some things and they're totally impossible. It would, it would take us 10 years to plan that one out, but, but uh, yeah. Oh, and that's, yes, Lans some good ideas. Yeah. You said it's Lansdale? Lansdale Borough, yeah. Okay. And they're a little bit more, um, they have more money than yeah, it's again. It's it's. I think you know, they yeah, set the bar way up there, but it can give you an idea of, of how they organized and what they did. And the other thing is to get the historical stuff from the centennial, you know, mm -hmm. 50 years ago, to see what there had to be some planning going on there. I don't think we go in parallel with that. No, that was huge. I remember that. Yeah, yeah that, that was all oh all week. Yeah. And Have you been, been in touch with the ladies' auxiliary at the fire company? That's somebody I got to talk to. Because I haven't talked to them because I, I wanted to get the fire company involved too, you know, because I'm sure they would want to do something for this. Right. Assistance. Well, they've got a lot of pictures up there too that I think you could probably get reproduced of the old fire station down on Front Street, the yeah. old ambulance, which was originally the hearse. Martin Stein's hearse that he donated. Yeah, he did that a lot back yeah. then. Yeah. Um, yeah. Corner and the 
acre and the, yep. yeah. So there, there is not a sesquicentennial committee that's independent from the borough, is there? I mean, this, is this it? Yeah, because we're not in, because we're not independent of our public, because mm -hmm. we didn't organize one like that. No. I, mean, I didn't know if there was some other group doing something. Oh, no, definitely. Okay. The, only, the only ones involved would be like, like the Rec Council and like the Heritage Council and, I, I, you know, I think what you need to do is just pull something together that is doable. Like, you know, maybe it's a week, maybe it's maybe it's once a week for four weeks, four different days in a month or something. You have the parade, and then you have three other days that you do something. But you know, just pick what you want to do. Take a look at that um, one borough, and then figure out. Yeah, I'm gonna see if they have a the long deal. weekend. Yeah, long, could yeah. Be a long weekend. Yeah. Because I know uh, uh, I, I talked to Mary Smith, who was the postmaster, right. and she's on the Heritage Council. And right. she, we were talking, uh, and that was something we had discussed. She and I discussed was on the fact of having a whole you know, weekend where you have several things that run into each other. Sure. Yeah, I shouldn't say run into each other, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. What you mean. And uh, because that's that would be nice to be able to have things like that, have like a. Some, have something and then have something work in conjunction with it afterwards. Mm -hmm. let me have, let me Freedom have Green, if you could have a brood mix oh, band yeah. maybe down well, that's, there. That's so Squahannock we, band. You know, see, that's who we were talking about. The, uh, and then have a projector that's showing all these pictures oh, through the cool. years yeah. on the wall, yeah. like they do when they have a movie night. Yeah, that, you know, that's that's yeah, the Marlins wall. I guess you could still do that yeah. now that they yeah. painted the the crest, the borough crest on the wall. Wow. By the way, if anybody hasn't seen that, that's yeah, beautiful. That is, it turned great. out great. Okay. Let me let me know if you need anything. And yes. Four of us have already started growing the beards. I'm sorry. Four of us have already started growing the beards because that plays into the centennial, right? There you Absolutely. Go. There you go. If I could grow a beard. I, I I'm grow way ahead of it. <laughs> Uh, council chamber audio and video improvements. I cannot get them to call me back. I have a. I, I would. I, I would. have a quote of a price from this to this amount, but I. Well, what's the this and the this? <laughs> that, that's just it. It's very vague as to this is the equipment you need, and it could go from this to this. The camera could be three hundred dollars, or it could be seventeen hundred dollars. Uh, I've asked them to please narrow it down to specific equipment. Are they visited the room here? We did um, a um, a Zoom <laughs> meeting here. Showed them. I took pictures. I took measurements of the room. I sent it to them. And I did get, I can't even really call it a proposal because nothing's broken down. Yeah. It's just very general. Well, and I called me in today and said, look, if you're not interested, just yeah. let us know. You're not going to hurt our feelings yeah. if this is too small a job for you. We, yeah. we were in our meeting with the wastewater treatment thing and we had our tables here. And it would have been ideal for like when John was presenting or when Andy was showing us numbers if we would have had a screen or even something to project on the wall or something to make it into this into more of a training room and I know I know thirty thousand dollars scared us off to do this yeah. as the whole thing the right way I mean, I've talked to Brian Schweitzer or Brian at Shrewsbury Borough yeah. Did I say his name right? Yeah that's it um, and you know he said what they did there was kind of you know patchwork they didn't you know they they're, they're still updating it and stuff but you know i mean i think we need to figure out what our vision is for this room and get it done because there's times when we can actually use it i mean even for well we don't have very many people thank you for coming but we don't have very many people here tonight but you know if we had more people having the screens up would be helpful um you know things like that so 
We have we laptops have laptop that the borough owns, correct? I'm sorry? We have laptops we have that one. the borough, yeah. one that the borough owns, that's it? We only have the one? The rest are desktops. I mean, it's not that hard to get a couple of TVs, mount them on that wall, and plug that camera into, you don't even have to plug it in, it's Wi-Fi. That camera is Wi-Fi capable, it could and you put it can right you, on there. Can you, you do, you, real, can you put that right on the internet from here? Sure. Okay, so Absolutely. that's the yeah, Somebody has to figure out. But you, look if you're it. looking at training, or like you said, you're, and we, you've, got, you've got two projectors, here with that laptop, you should be able to show that right on the wall, correct? And do a zoom and right on the wall. If I mean, we did it for training yeah, yeah. here with the projector, yes. Yeah, because yeah. we have two projectors, correct? Well, one's the police department, and we have. One. Oh, you borrowed that, and then we have the other one because that's the one that we use to do. I have a screen that I'd be more than happy. We have a screen here. I'd be more than happy to donate it. I mean, it just sits in the basement. Yeah, we've got one right over there. Okay. But you got a white wall there. I think all yeah. that's all we did. We show it right on that wall. You have to lower these lights. But yeah. well, why, don't, uh, why don't you see if you can get something out of them for next month, and then uh -uh. If, if we can't, I, I think we need money. to take a, take a different direction or find a different company. Ask to speak to the manager. Yeah. He is the manager. See, this this doesn't go through Best Buy. It goes through a separate department that they have for this kind of stuff. You know, it's not the geek squad that comes in. They do large, large buildings and corporations, I mean, companies. I mean, it can't be that far away that they can't. I mean, we're close to Baltimore, we're close to York. I mean, they should be able to send somebody in and you'll be able to. I couldn't even get them to send somebody in when we did that. So, are the other boroughs around here any more advanced than we are? You said that. I think, sure, I think uh, Shrewsbury Township is. So, we could maybe talk to Shrewsbury Township, find out who they got, or something like that? Well, he, I that's part of their old, their new building, too. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually because they're selling their old one, right? Yeah. We buy their equipment. Oh, they, <laughs> didn't they just buy a new <laughs> camera? It, I don't. A team bought it, and they had a high score. It's quite a camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I know the guy that was over in Shrewsbury that was the audio video director over here, and he would work with him to do that. Okay. I forgot about him. He lives in Shrewsbury. Yeah, he did it for Hereford. He did all the audio video. And maybe something like that. And maybe we could do that as a class project. Maybe somebody at the high school would come in and, you know, we could, you know, let them buy the equipment and uh, install it, and that could be a class project. I know they have a lot of, um, AV type stuff at the high school. I don't know if it's an actual class or if it's a club. But I think that's who does the um, um, their meetings, isn't it? Their oh, uh, probably their yeah. board meetings. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The superintendent. Yeah. Meeting. Well, there could be like a small scholarship involved. There could be. <laughs> I mean, we have to be able to get it done nicely for you know a reasonable price. So. It, 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 in looking at it and their their pr proposal, it doesn't take a lot. Where it runs into a problem is you almost need two people to operate it if you're going to do what Shrewsbury does. Because Brian's on the board there with sound and he's doing one camera and Nate's there and he's got the headphones on and he's doing another one. And, you See, know, that's a problem that too. Yeah. It would just, if I'm talking, the camera points at me. If you start talking, it swings right. over to you. Yeah, you know, I have a camera like that at my house. We're all talking, Where which is usually what happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me get on them one more time. Um, 
I hopefully he'll call me back. I'm hoping that, you know, his number's not getting blocked by my AT&T. Okay. Um, yeah, the York Burroughs Association, that's over. I'm sorry, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, any public comment? I have a comment. Okay. I'm public, right? You are public. <laughs> Two questions. One, Andrew, did the, the Boy Scouts get in touch with you about the little library thing that we were going to have at the park? You know that? The, uh, the, the free library? library? The free library? Yeah, they were to put it in. Uh, So they, you, they already know where they're Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we picked a spot out, made sure we didn't have any utilities in the area. Yeah, all that was perfect. Okay. So I know that the um, the new bookstore has been donating to the other, the other one that Amy Hopkins takes care of. And so, so there would be another outlet. I just wanted to see if it was in place. And would... Yeah. The other thing is, is I guess it's, maybe it's not so much to bring up here, but a couple of weeks ago my house got egged. Do I just call the police on something like that, or do I? Did you say egg? Yeah. Oh, okay. I meant to get a lot of egg, but it's enough so it was a pan and have to clean off. Yeah. So I don't know if there's. If I, I guess if I call the police, it would make some sense. If there were, if it had happened other places, there would be some sort of a systematic thing or something. But I would. I don't know what you're going to get out of it unless you're going to turn it into your insurance company. That happened to me. Well, I cleaned it. I mean, it's done. Yeah. If you. What you should do is do it, get them to come down take, or take pictures of it, because I had the same thing, only they used rocks. I mean, they actually threw them through my siding and th into the um, um, into the uh, insulation, and it actually made a hole in my inside wall. That's how hard they threw it. And I guess they were trying for my windows and missed. But they broke a whole bunch of my my uh, my siding, you know, vinyl siding. And the police came out. I had a report, and because I had a report and pictures, my insurance company covered. Well, they gave me money back because fortunately I had additional um, siding in my garage because there's no way I could match it up. God knows, uh, it's been there probably 60 years, so you can't match it up. Uh, but I did get some money out of it, so anytime something like that happens, pictures, police, report, and call your insurance company. All right, I didn't want to belabor it, but I just wanted to. That's, Eric. you think that was just the wrong place, wrong time? Who's mad know. at you? <laughs> well, you can tell we're all sitting at this table here. I've got I've time. got four debts in my car from somebody. Do we have an update on this roof for this building? We had a pre bid meeting on Friday of last week. Uh, we had three contractors. The pre bid meeting was not mandatory. Uh, we had three contractors show up at the pre bid meeting. We had another contractor show up today. Their requests for information are due on um, Friday, and bids are due on October 6th. Good. So that gives the warehouse enough time to review, make sure the bids are sufficient, and that all the documents are included for council's review and uh, recommendation on the low bid for the October 17th. Are we okay right now with some of the temp repairs that have been made? Yeah. Good. Uh, I have one public comment for me because I'm also a public. Uh, anybody on this council who wants to meet with me, to talk with me, needs help, wants to bend my ear, whatever, I extend that to you. The mayor and I, I'm sorry. Let me if you just, I'll just finish my sentence. <laughs> and uh, I know the mayor and I work well together on a number of other issues. I mean, you know, there's no reason why this council can't come together and be a cohesive body to help everybody in town. 
So I, I'm offering that. It's all but it's about it's the best I can do. Sometimes it's good to have somebody else to bounce ideas off. Oh, of absolutely. Yeah. See what sticks. Yeah, I enjoy your ten o'clock at night texts. <laughs> yeah, but you answer me. I, I, I do. I'm usually not. I I email and I don't expect people to answer. <laughs> them. That's the that's the thing. Yes, sir. Uh, Rain old North Constitution Avenue. The question on North Constitution Avenue from Main Street to Man and Parker is how or what can we do to reduce the speed limit? It is now getting known to be known as the Indy 500 Raceway, and I've even had people tell me you couldn't pay me to live on North Constitution Avenue. Thank you. Um, do we have our speed limit signs in yet? Speed limit signs are in, but that's a state road. Oh. They are in? Okay. You, oh, I'm sorry, the radar speed sign. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, Did they you go to Ryan now? We yeah. Can't, can't, can't put them on okay. the state road? Yes. Don't ask folks that. Yes. No. <laughs> okay. Well, help. Like everybody says, they're doing, it's 20, uh, 35, they're doing 50, 60. If we take it down to 25, they said, we might be lucky to get them down to 40, 45 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what, what Andrew's saying is it's a state road. I know that. Yeah. I don't, I, what can we do? Complain to the state can police. Rate our speed signs. Okay. We, we have uh, the mayor work with Shrewsbury Borough to get radar speed signs that we could put up. They're, um, I think they just came in. They did. Right? So we could put one up on North, North Constitution and it, it, might, uh, it might help some. It, it's a, it's a one way to slow traffic down. But like they said, we're starting to get children on there now, and people are concerned. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. And there are no sidewalks on that road yeah. as you get out farther. So how did, what's, the, what's the speed limit, 20 mile an hour between uh, railroad and Shrewsbury now? 20? That's 30. That's 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. I don't think there's anything under 25. Well, it goes, the North Constitution yeah. goes up to, what, 40 miles an hour as you go out towards... Once you pass yeah. Weatherstill, it goes up to... 40? Uh, I think it goes up to 45. 40. I was going to say, try to stay under 50, 50 comes down 30. that hill, yeah. 30. You're right, Ray, and I will, I will talk to Chief also to see if there's anything he can do with maybe stationing a car there every now and then that will dissuade. As soon as they see police on the side of the car, they tend to slow down. I know that's what they had done out at Weathersfield. They pull in there sometimes and just sit and do their paperwork or... Officer Hefner said he did enforcement now. I used to have my mailbox... Weathersfield right there at the... I used to have my mailbox on the other side of the street and my children, they, yeah. they moved it over to our side got permission to. They didn't want me crossing the road. Well, last August, one day when I went over to get the mail, from the time I left our sidewalk, go over the other side and come back, 53 vehicles went in and out. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll do that. We'll put the speed limit sign, talk to Chief talk to about Chief. getting uh, cars sitting in there and, yeah. And let us know if it, you know, next next month. I don't know how long it's going to take. Well, like I say, a, a lot of people on Constitution are concerned about it. Well, they should be. Yeah, I would be. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Yes. Um, uh, did, did Andrew, did you, did you get that on when I was talking about the alley, Cherry, I mean Cherry Alley, right in the back of my place there? Were you going to put that on the agenda for next time to talk about what, what we could do about that alleyway? Before October's meeting. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, because what, what, what Ray's talking about, too, would all enter into, enter into that, you know? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Okay. I would entertain a motion. I will move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.